we can go ahead and get started. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another PAMIC webinar. My name is Brittany Bargo, and I'm the Director of Communications and Technology at PAMIC. Today's webinar is presented by Angela Abbott, and moderating the session will be Jeremy, Jeremy Leopold of Invoice Cloud. And this webinar is titled, Five Tips to Improve Policyholder Experience and Reduce Customer Churn. Now, before we begin, I would like to thank our 2021 Platinum sponsors, which are on this screen. As without them, this quality education would not be possible. So a few housekeeping items before we begin. We ask that if you have any questions, please submit them through the Q&A block at the bottom of your screen. There will be a few polling questions as well that pop up throughout. Uh, so be wary of those and try to answer them accordingly. Additionally, if you would like to rewatch this presentation or would like to contact Invoice Cloud, both will be hosted on the on-demand section of the PAMIC website after the conclusion of this webinar. Now, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Jeremy and Angela to begin the presentation. So, Jeremy? Thanks, Brittany. Um, hey, everyone. Thank you for taking the time out today. We're very excited for this conversation. And hopefully by the end of this afternoon, everyone will be able to take away the number one factor that contributes to a good user experience, why online payments are key to improving the policyholder experience, how policyholders prefer to make payments and why, current satisfaction levels of payment options and platforms, and how to effectively reduce customer churn. And I can't imagine anyone better for leading this conversation. With 20 years in the billing and payments industry and over half that time dedicated to the insurance market, Angela Abbott's currently the Director of Partnerships for Invoice Club. Her mission is to ensure successful integrations, connect carriers with a best-in-class billing and payments experience, and maintain the overall relationship between Invoice Cloud and the partners it serves. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to Angela. Thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate that. Appreciate Betsy, the introduction. And I'll just kind of mirror what Jeremy said. We're very excited to be talking to you guys today and to be able to support PAMIC in that effort. So um, uh, Betsy did a great job of going over the housekeeping items, but I did want to emphasize that we'll, we'll be making use of the poll functionality in Zoom, which I think makes it a little more fun, gets it a little more interactive and uh, and also some good dialogue back and forth between us. So before we get into the real polls, we're gonna do a test poll just for fun and make sure you understand how to use it. So Brittany, go ahead and launch that first poll, which is answer honestly. Now, are you wearing pajamas during this Zoom call? So I'm going to um, let that run for just another second or two and then let's let, uh, Brittany, show those results. <laughs> I like the honesty. Um, looks like we've got 20% of you that said, absolutely, I'm, in, I'm wearing my pajamas. 67% uh, saying, absolutely not. And uh, some of you are a mix. Business on top, PJ's on the bottom. So not mad at you either way, but again, thanks for joining. And that's how we'll be making use of the polls today on some different uh, topics later on. So, okay, uh, again, the sponsorship slide is there. Thank you for joining and, and we'll just jump right in. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide. Uh, let you know just a little bit more about Invoice Cloud and who we are. So Invoice Cloud started in 2009 and really kind of started over, over in the uh, government and utility sector. It all began when our CEO, Bob Bennett, was paying his bills online. I believe he had you know, his Amex to pay, his Capital One, and then also had to make a tax payment in the same day and noticed that you know, glaring difference between those two experiences. And he thought, as he was running a payments company at the time, you know, this is a real opportunity you know, to bring this Fortune 50, Fortune 100 experience and put it into vertical markets so that everyone can have that experience. And quite honestly, in this day and age, you know, your policyholders are at the end of the day consumers. And when they can go online and have that Amazon experience, they're going to expect it in all aspects of their life. So paying insurance bills would be no different. Um, so a little bit about um, our experience here is uh, we're in 2020 processed over $17 billion in payments, uh, which equated to about 84 million transactions. We have 425 employees, it's growing every day, and we're growing as a company at a rate of about 40% year over year. 
Um, we do have 2,100 clients in all 50 states, and that's company-wide, but here's a statistic I am very proud to tell you is in the 36 months that we uh, really focused on insurance, apart from the government utilities business, we have collected 150 insurance clients, and that's in just 36 months, so pretty proud of that, and I think it's a uh, um, attributable to the way we've designed our program. And those are some things and some tips I'm going to share with you today on, on how to make best use of that. So let's move forward. Um, one thing that I did want to talk to you about, and this is where we kind of built these tips around, is that we um, performed a survey this last summer around the June or July timeframe, Invoice Cloud did. Um, and I want to share the results with you. And it was just generally around the policyholder experience. So here's a little bit about the research. Uh, June of 2020, a little over a thousand responses collected. There's some age uh, demographics breakdown. Well, one of the key questions that we asked during this survey was, how likely are you to look for a new insurance provider in the next 12 months? And as you can see, the response to that was an overwhelming 45% of the respondents were either likely or very likely to look for a new insurance provider in the next 12 months. So stop and think for a second if nearly half of your customer base was likely or very likely to search for a new provider in the next year. It's probably a, a statistic that doesn't really sit well. And you know, I think what it does is it puts a direct link between customer satisfaction and customer churn. So you know, if we know how critical it is, then how do we accomplish that? And those are some things we're gonna cover. Um, also, to kind of further support uh, our survey that we did, here's some more supporting information that I always like to quote um, from Harvard Business Review, acquiring a new customer is anywhere from five to 25 times more expensive than retaining an existing one. And then Bain and Company will tell us about increasing retention that um, if you increase your retention, customer retention rates by 5%, you have an exponential increase in your profits. So Customer retention definitely matters. Another thing that we know about the insurance market is that it's low touch by nature. So you've got your binding, you've got hopefully few and far between on the claims side. Uh, and sometimes that claims experience is, is not a very pleasant one. Um, so then the most regular touch point that you'll have with your policyholder base is at the premium payment. So you know, it's, it's the key is to make effective use of the premium payment experience to engage the insurer during the process and drive that self-service adoption that'll make you more efficient. So as promised, we're going to offer you five tips. Tip number one, focus on the online payment experience. From that recent, um, from their most recent insurance payment um, from our survey, 77% of the respondents made an online payment either through a one-time checkout route or an auto pay. Um, so what, what this graph really tells us, and some of you might be thinking that I was going to present something that says that people aren't using, you know, online payment tools, and we're trying to drive them using online payment tools. And that's not what I'm here to tell you about. What I want to talk about is that, you know, Invoice Cloud, other EBPP providers out in the market, other carriers, other software platforms, you know, everybody's got online payment options these days. Those are table stakes. So, how do you, I think the conversation then has to be, how do you, how do you expand that? How do you make it better? You know, um, you're going to hear this a lot through my time with you today. It's not about having the options. It's about how easy is it to get to the options and what's the design of your platform to make that easier for the policyholder. Nobody wants to click five deep through something to get to where they're trying to go. So uh, again, tip number one, focus on the online payment experience. So now we're gonna get a chance to use one of those poll questions again. So Brittany, if you could bring up our next poll question, which of the following billing and payment options do you offer today? Um, you can select more than one. So if you wouldn't mind just taking a moment and the options are auto pay or recurring payments, scheduled payments, think in terms of a one-time future dated payment, the ability to turn off your paper statement, suppress paper and, and have someone enroll in a paperless delivery and an IVR, which is the automated phone system.
All right. Brittany, as soon as you see that flurry of activity settle down, you can post it. Okay. What I probably expected there, most everybody has, again, the table stakes, auto pay. Um, some of you have about 70% are having scheduled payments. Only half of you have uh, paperless enrollment options and a very small 29% have IVR. These are all you know, effective tools. We always talk about pieces of the electronic pie, right? Those are uh, being able to offer all things is really what's gonna get you to that adoption level that, that you'll need to experience to, to get those efficiencies in your business. So, okay, so let's move on then. Uh, wanted to show you what the, kind of that looks like. So, it, you know, again, if we talk about the fact that all those features are table stakes and it's the design of the platform, here's something that I wanted to show you that is an average adoption increase in Invoice Cloud customers. So if we take our customers collectively and average the results that they're getting, um, and mind you, very important fact, we're taking usually this business away from another provider, another EBPP provider in this space. So again, features are there, so in order for us to get things like 119% increase in e-payment adoption and for us to be able to um, increase paperless enrollment by almost 3x, there must be something wildly different about our approach. And that's exactly in the design of the platform. So um, again, again, that improving that customer experience does include um, making it easy to get to the options. And it's not just the options. I'll sound like a broken record by the time we, we finish, but it is an important point. Um, on to the next tip, find a, sol a solution that's simple and easy to use. So the most common reasons for paying online were, um, it was convenient and I'm enrolled in automatic payments. And so this was the question asked, you know, why did you choose to make a payment online? So again, another just point of proof that making things convenient and, and allowing someone to enroll in auto pay, um, is, is what's driving that. Conversely, the reasons that people did not pay online, uh, overwhelmingly uh, on the 28%, their online system was just too difficult to use. People will abandon um, something that, that you know, causes them resistance. So if here's an example of that, a website maybe um, that has a one-time payment or a guest checkout is, is, a, is a great option. But if you're asked to register, then most people will have a response such as they'll pick up the phone and call you or they'll mail a check or even worse, they'll put off the payment or even forget to pay. So really um, the devil's in the details here. A lot of our competitors will say, you know, in a bucket or to be able to check a box, do you offer notifications? Yes. Okay, well, a notification is not the same as a notification with a link. A notification with a link is not the same as a notification with a link that drops you right into the payment route, as opposed to hitting that login wall. No one knows their credentials. Now they're frustrated because they can't access what they came to access. So um, go ahead and launch another poll question really quickly. Just a yes or no on this one, guys, a real quick one. Do you currently offer a one-time payment or a guest checkout option that does not require registration? I think that's an important piece of it because as I mentioned, receiving a notification is great. Receiving a notification with a link is even better, but receiving a notification with a link that drops you directly into the payment route with no friction is the best, is the best option. Brittany, what's our audience saying on this one? Oh, wow, half and half, half and half. Okay, so there's an area, there's an area to improve upon. Um, that was a very useful poll, thanks. Okay, I'm gonna move on to tip number three. Um, so just quickly recap, number one, focus on the pay, uh, online payment experience. Number two, make it simple and easy to use. And number three, more specifically, make it easy to enroll in uh, specific things like automatic payments and paperless billing. And it's really here, it's just all about providing a clear path to the options that drive the results. So once again, this is uh, information from our survey uh, with the folks that were polled, 35% um, said, you know what, easy to use and easy enrollment and specifically automatic payments uh, and paperless billing was the key there. 
here's a, uh, let me give you kind of a visual representation of this. Um, without a self-service environment, customers will continue to, as I mentioned before, either call your office for assistance with paying their bill. So moving payers to a self-service environment will free up your CSRs or staff or even um, agents in the field, you know, being able to um, provide different options. Um, and that way, uh, your, your folks there in your office can work on more important tasks. So once again, I'll say having the features is not enough. It's the design of the platform and the deliberate and intentional placement of the self-service drivers that lends to the greatest achievement of self-service. So if you look on your screen here, the, um, the web, via the web, you see um, email me and pay by text, email me and auto pay, email me and pay. Uh, Enroll me, sorry, not email. Enroll me in paperless. That's on the web experience. You can see right next to that, the mobile experience, same thing. And then again, even at the end of the payment, if, they, if they've not enrolled in these things, it's just breadcrumbing them along and, and engaging with the policyholder where they are. Uh, and, and again, the, the percentage of the customers that enroll in a payment channel or a reminder option is determined by the simplicity of that enrollment. Just offering that channel does not get the results. Okay, another tip here, optimize your omni-channel payment options. Um, I think it's interesting. I, I, I hear out in the marketplace, people will talk about the word multi-channel and we use the word omni-channel. And really, um, you know, I did kind of just a, a dictionary search and I found a really interesting a way to describe the two. Um, the main difference between omni-channel and multi-channel is that omni-channel involves all channels and revolves around your customer, while multi-channel involves many channels and revolves around a product. And I think that's important because, you know, it's about the ability not, not just to offer all the things, but also that they are um, not in separate silos and that they're able to talk to one another and have that kind of knowledge of where things are happening. So um, Invoice Cloud, we have all the features. Other providers may check that box, but it's about how we're designing the platform. Um, okay, I'm gonna ask real quick if in the chat, um, I don't know if I can see that, but I wanted to see if anybody could say what they know about um, what's the number one reason someone fails to make a payment. Any guesses out there? I don't know if I can see the chat. Ah, Lynn Burkett. Hope I said your name correctly. Her answer was, I forgot. And she's absolutely correct. That is the number one reason that people forget to make a payment. So our tip number five is eliminate the I forgot excuse. You know, Lynn, I was hoping that you weren't going to say because I don't have any money because Invoice Cloud does not solve that problem. But yes, the number one answer is I forgot and we do solve that problem. And I will talk about that in a moment. But um, again, from our survey, here's some information that's important. 49% of the respondents who missed the payment said the primary reason was that they forgot. A subset of those at 21%, not insignificant, is that, again, what we've heard before, the payment process was too confusing. So let me give you some um, examples of um, some intelligent communications that drive higher adoption. So on our platform, we would have um, email reminders up to three per bill. Uh, we have 29 event-based templates to accomplish that. Um, those reminders, again, a link that will actually go to uh, the payment route without a blocker. And the reason we call them intelligent communications is because a first notice is sent and only a second and final would be sent if the policyholder has not taken action. So if they're enrolled in a one-time scheduled payment or they're enrolled in an auto pay, they would get a different type of messaging, you know, something along the lines of your payment is scheduled to be processed on X date as opposed to you haven't made your payment. So intelligent communications are driving that. Um, you see another example next to that in a text reminders. For those who haven't paid with the ability to, if you're a registered user, simply type the word pay back. If you're an unregistered user, once again, an easy link is dropped in right into the payment route. And then um, one of the ones I particularly love is the self-service calendar reminders. I am of the mindset if it's not in my Outlook inbox, it's probably not going to get done and not top of mind for me. 
Um, something similar that you may have seen in your own personal life is when you book a flight. Uh, American Airlines will put my flight time right on my Outlook calendar, which is helpful for me because, um, you know, I, I might forget that I'm flying during that time and try to schedule a meeting, which I wouldn't obviously be able to attend as it would be in the air when we get back to doing those kinds of things, that is. Um, so the point being really is just that, you know, interacting with people where they are. So if the calendar uh, reminder is what's useful for them, you know, and we, we support, you know, the uh, Google and Apple calendars and, um, you know, whether it's Outlook or your Yahoo or anything like that. So uh, you can schedule that right on your calendar, appealing to all, all ways people want to communicate with you. And then um, last but not least, with an outbound IVR and some communication campaigns that we, we have available to you as well. So we're going to launch another fun campaign question here, another poll question here, which are you using today to eliminate the I forgot? So here's your choices. And again, don't forget, you can um, select multiple of these. So e-reminders, that being email, text, or calendar alerts. Are you using an outbound IVR for messaging? A second printed notice before the due date, maybe printing something or none of the above. Okay, looks like we've got about 45% um, using some form of email or e-reminders. E um, let's see, the next second, 36% still printing second notices before the due date. Um, I think that's that's where the opportunity is, right? Is is, is removing some of those, um, ha having to print, print, print and mail being very costly. So, you know, maybe using some of these other um, communication events to drive the adoption would be more cost effective than um, the printed notices. 18% um, not using any of the communications I mentioned, and then no one using outbound IVR. Um, probably a, a very underutilized um, channel there. And I think it's very effective. Uh, probably if I had to give you a use case for that would be in the cancellations. Uh, think, think in terms of you know, loading a cancellation list or pending cancellations, um, having the reverse of an IVR. So an, out, an outbound campaign that goes out, dials, lets people know that they um, have a payment due and it gives them the ability by pressing one to take an action and take care of that payment. So those are some those are some great options to have. All right. So um, just to kind of start uh, bringing some some things you know full circle and wrapping uh, wrapping up some information here on the tips. Um, Invoice Cloud's platform is consistently engaging customers to yield more online payments and paperless enrollments, which is driving positive business outcomes that our clients like you uh, would want. A better user experience is directly equal to higher adoption. Our platform, as you've seen, is designed for the best user experience and delivers the highest adoption rates. We're, um, we've designed our EBPP offering to reduce the restriction of paying online. You know, we've talked about throughout um, the slides so far is you know, everybody's gonna choose that path of least resistance. If, it's, if it makes it difficult and they don't get that Amazon-like experience, they're likely to abandon that. We don't want that to happen. Um, second bullet, engage customers at the existing contact points. Meet people where they are, you know, give them the options that they want and then make those options easy to use. And, and thirdly, um, certainly not least of these is enable the payment through any channel. That goes back to what I, what I talked about with notifications. It's great to notify somebody of something, but if you don't give them a way to solve the issue that you've notified for them before, you've only come halfway with that customer. So, um, you know, the over, overlying theme here has been, why does adoption matter for insurers? I think if you start in the center, higher adoption is better retention. You come up to the top right. So if you supply an easy to use and intuitive poly, policyholder experience, then you will drive more adoption um, through things like auto pay and paperless enrollment, um, pay by text. Um, then you will accelerate your collections by improving your cash flow and reduce staff loads and manual processes, which will in turn reduce your operational costs to your business. And so this allows the opportunity for you to um, increase the investment in your customer experience back again. It was kind of a flywheel effect of, of getting that um, 
getting the pump primed and keeping it going. Um, I wanted to also share with you at this time a couple of um, case studies that we've done. So some, some real life challenges that we solved um, with a couple customers here. One's California Mutual, and um, they had a particular challenge. Um, their, their processing platform was very clunky, difficult to use. Um, it was not integrated with a core policy administration system, resulting in a very time-consuming payment reconciliation process. Um, so that we, when, after they implemented our solution, I will skip to the next slide because it shows some graphical data. So in the, just the first uh, 12 months with Invoice Cloud, their paperless adoption went from 3% to 44%. So that resulted in quite a bit of print and mail savings. Um, and then on the electronic payment adoption, we took them from 21% to 53% um, in, in the adoption just within the first 12 months. So um, one of the things too that, that came out of this was ex extremely impactful for CalMutual was getting 15 hours a week back that they were spending on reconcil reconciling. So I don't know if that I don't know if that hits home to anybody um, that's part of the uh, conversation today, but you know, if you're if that's part of your job role is reconciliation, and it, it takes way too much of your time that you could be doing, you know, with other functions in the business that would uh, be more impactful, and we, we certainly have ways to simplify that process. Um, okay, and I think that we had one last uh, poll question that we'd like to just kind of get some feedback from you on. And that is, which of these objectives is the most important to you and your organization? So this is something we just love to, to hear as we continue to kind of craft uh, Invoice Cloud and, and craft this solution in the marketplace. We want to know what matters the most to you. So, you know, uh, given that we have a way to uh, decrease the incoming calls, is that the biggest, you know, one of the biggest objectives for you? Is it print and mail kind of savings? Um, is it reducing your late payments and cancellations? Or is it in streamlining manual collections processes? We just we want to hear from you on this in terms of what, what are some of the challenges that you're trying to solve. Okay, so this 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 result is not surprising given a few polls ago where only uh, I think it was 50% are making use of paperless options. I think it was. Um, so 92% of you are saying that you would like to decrease the um, uh, inbound paper checks and outbound print and mail in the office. So uh, that's good to, good to hear that that's an objective out there that we can help solve for you. Reduce late payments and cancellations was another high percentage. Decreased payment related phone calls came in third and streamlined manual collections came in fourth at 46%. Good feedback. I so I appreciate you guys um, having fun with this and this and kind of responding to the polls. This is great information and hopefully allowed for the presentation to be a little more interactive and entertaining. So uh, we're, we're gonna be able to um, uh, get, get some questions in. I wanna make sure we save some time for some questions, but I also wanted to announce a very special incentive that we are gonna to offer to the participants of this uh, webinar today. Let me bring up the details. You know, Invoice Cloud, and I, I did see um, through the participant list, I was just glancing through, you know, there's, uh, we've got, I've got friends, colleagues, uh, clients uh, that are in, in attendance, and then a bunch of people I don't know as well. Oh, hi, Betsy. Jeff Hainer, hi. Julie, hi. Lynn, thanks again for the chat. Yeah, so lots, lots of great people on the phone that I want to act with, but a lot of you I don't know. And so I would really like to get to know you. So um, we'd like to schedule some time apart from this. So what we're doing is offering an incentive. If you will email me, Angela Abbott, with the subject line PAMIC, and there's my email address. We'd like to book a discovery call with you. What is it in the discovery call? It simply just means we want to get to know you. We understand what you're struggling with. Is there an opportunity for us to help you? And it doesn't make sense to, you know, have a follow-on call and do a deeper dive. So just a brief call so we can understand, do we have an opportunity to work together? If you can get that on the books for us, 
before April 30th, so roughly between now and the next 30 days, we're going to send out a uh, $100 Visa gift card to you for having the conversation. And so I appreciate that. So again, two, two points to remember in that, please put PAMIC in the subject line. And there's my email address, aabbott at invoicecloud.com. So I'm going to um, move into some of the questions here. And so I'm looking, I'm looking at the questions now. Um, if anyone has questions, by the way, feel free to throw them in the, the Q&A block down at the bottom. But the, the first question I see here is, um, what platforms does Invoice Cloud integrate with? Um, yeah, so you know, integrations and partnerships are a cornerstone of our business, for sure. And um, you know, we're, we're proactively integrating um, and through customer request, integrating with a lot of platforms out there. Some of the ones that I can mention um, our IMT, uh, Brightcore, Town and Country, Sapiens, uh, Mutual Expert, Horizon, ISI, LIDP. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few, uh, but yeah, we're happy to, uh, to, to follow up more specifically if you have a platform um, in mind uh, or one that you're on today, uh, we certainly can discuss that. Right. Um, another question here that, that's a good one is, do you have any recommendations for organizations that have limited IT resources to keep up with the current payment trends? Yeah, I mean, I think I would say, um, again, another, you know, another strength that we have, and we've, we've done webinars specifically around this topic, um, which is was not part of today's topic, but um, you know, Invoice Cloud is, is a true SaaS solution. And, you know, it, what that means, and a lot of it, before I was, before I was uh, involved with this, I really had heard the word SaaS out there in the marketplace. You know, you kind of, you hear it, it's a buzzword, but do you know what it truly, truly means? What it means to you is, you know, you're dealing with one stack of code. Um, no one's ever going to ask you what version of Invoice Cloud you're on. You know, we are able to deploy uh upgrades and updates without you having to do any lift or use any of your own resources. And so when we deploy something like Google Pay, Apple Pay, or just recently when we added Venmo and PayPal to our um, payment tender options, all 2,100 customers had access to those functions you know, right away as soon as we deployed it. And they didn't have to do anything to get it. So I would say, you know, yeah, recommendations would be you know, partner with organizations who have a, a true SaaS delivery model so that you can always be kind of in the vein of having the most current payment trends, but without having to use your own um, IT resources. Great. All right. Um, another question here that you you touched on, I think, during the presentation, but maybe a lot you can elaborate on here is how does a voice cloud drive adoption? What, what are the steps that that voice cloud takes for that? Yeah, again, I think it all goes back to certainly having omni-channel, um, having all the all the different channels available. But, you know, and I think I, I said it a few times and I'll, I'll, I'll just end with a bang here. It's, it's again, it's not about the features, guys. It is about the design. And, I'll, and you know, we, we often use an analogy of you know, that's why that the gum is in the checkout lane, right? If you come into the, the checkout lane and you, you realize you needed, you know, uh, gum and it's way back there by the milk, then you're probably going to go home without gum that day because you're already in that checkout lane. So that's, that's kind of, that's kind of how we've purposely designed our platform to, uh, to engage with the policyholder where they are and make that simple to use. Another story I like to tell or um, analogy that I like to give is, you know, during this past holiday season, there was, you know, um, that probably that gift for one of your children or someone in your family that sought after gift that was available on either target.com or walmart.com and also amazon.com. And which one did you pick, you know, to make that purchase? Most people that I talk to tell me Amazon's what they use. And the reason that they did is because it's just so easy. And so again, you know, what I mentioned at the beginning of our time together was policyholders are consumers. And if they can have that type of experience in their day-to-day -day life, then they're going to expect it in, you know, all the interactions that they have, even through paying a bill to their insurance carrier. 
Great. That's, that's a good question. A, a couple more here, Angela, I think that I think are are good. Um, do you have a text message solution? So maybe you can talk a little about the pay by text, text reminders as well. Just touch on that. Yeah, we do have a, a text messaging solution. Um, it's, uh, I think I'm seeing the question here, something like a High Marley or a Zip Whip. I've actually spoken with the folks at High, High Marley about working with them, but yes, um, um, great guys too, really interesting um, product. Um, why don't you, I'm gonna throw this one back to you, Jeremy. Why don't you talk a little bit about um, how carriers could take you know, best advantage of our text messaging solution? For sure. So there's a couple different things on this one. You know, Angela talked a little bit about the the email reminders and then providing other options for for reminders for folks. Um, someone like me who I'm, I'm not checking my personal email every day, uh, but I am checking my phone every day. So for me, enrolling in, in text reminders is going to be more effective than an email reminder, where for someone else, email reminder might be more effective. So we do have those text reminder options and pay by text functionality as well, where you know, I, I could, from that text reminder, if my payment information's not saved, I have a link that I can click and go to a fully mobile optimized payment route to make a payment. Or if I do store payment information, I can actually pay right from the text message right there um, as well. So the short answer is yes, we do have a text message functionality on that. And another, another product feature that we released recently was the ability for a customer service rep or someone you know working in the in the carrier's um, office uh, to be able to if you're on the phone with a policyholder and they're having some issues you know um, having an IVR is nice to transfer them off to but sometimes it's also nice to be able to say hey I'm going to drop you a link what's your text what's your cell number you know I can drop you a link right now that puts you right in the payment route and so you're kind of accomplishing a few things by that right you're 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 training encouraging, you know, developing that self-service behavior within your policyholder base while you still have them on the phone and, and taking care of them. And you're going to get them to realize how easy that was, right? So that, that, so that next time they don't call your office, they just go right ahead with making the text payment or the other electronic payment because you've coached them now and trained them on how to um, make that transition. Um, and, you know, so it, it does a lot of great things. Um, PCI compliance wise, it takes, you know, if you're, if you're dealing with not wanting to take credit card information over the phone, this is another great way to, you know, shift that responsibility over to, you know, just dropping a payment link so that they're entering the information instead of you. So it's just another way to kind of leverage some of our text functionality in, in different scenarios. I, I see a question here. Um, do you recommend offering a discount for customers enrolling in paperless delivery? If you can, great. I mean, you know, any, anything you can do to promote and encourage um, um, that enrollment, I think is, is good. Have I seen some of our customers and carriers do that? Yes, I have. But I think we still have uh, an opportunity to make it wildly successful by the design of our platform, you know, just by deploying Invoice Cloud, where maybe you don't have to offer that discount to get it to be successful. So maybe give us a try before you start making some discounts. <laughs> I don't know. That's my recommendation. Um, another good one here, Angela, is it, the branding on on the payment routes on you know an invoice cloud. Is it is it invoice cloud and that's what's shown, or or is it branded as the the carrier? Yes, yeah, definitely branded as the carrier. You know, we work with we work with you as a part of the um, implementation and delivery to uh, create that that seamless look and that same look and feel of your site. So, and then and then the last one, kind of talking about, I, I think the question is talking about the the top end, the largest carriers that we work with, um, but maybe the range might be helpful for folks because I think there's probably a range of of sizes of carriers here in, in direct rate and premium. Can, can you talk a little bit about, you know, I, uh, you know, I know we, we kind of work with everybody, but can you talk a little about the range of folks that we, that we do work with? Yeah, certainly. I mean, yeah. And it, and it is a range. Um, you know, we have, we have carriers that are very large on, on some very you know sophisticated platforms out there um, in the hundreds of millions of DWP. Um, and, and that's certainly fine. You know, we're able to create those efficiencies, the, the efficiencies we create for the larger customers are maybe a little bit different than the ones that we create for the smaller customers. And I'll say, 
uh, for the larger customers, we often see um, they've grown by um, acquiring, you know, just like, like any companies do this, grown by acquisition or maybe a, a different line of business they added and now they're working with three or four different software platforms. And what Invoice Cloud can do in that situation is still create that, you know, common denominator of that seamless customer experience across all those platforms. And, um, and so that's on the, on the larger end, on the smaller end. I mean, we love our farm mutuals out there. I mean, I, I work specifically with a large group of our farm mutuals out there. And one of the things that we recently got back as a, as a quote from a case study that we were doing with a farm mutual was that, um, you know, that invoice cloud actually gave them a larger footprint and gave them some of the tools to, to operate like a larger carrier would to attract more business to them. So yeah, we run the gamut and we, we'd love to work with, with, you know, all carriers out there, all lines of business. We have experience with workers comp with, you know, all the various PNC and life, life insurance and even some health. So, you know, servicing all lines of business as well. Perfect. And I, I think the last one, a good one to, to wrap this up. Will this presentation be available uh, after this webinar? <laughs> it will. Um, we, uh, we are recording it and we will be able to provide a link. So, you know, you can either reach out to me, you can reach out to uh, PAMIC, and both of us will have this recording available that you can share and rewatch or, you know, send it to, to folks that you think might uh, benefit from hearing some of the information that we shared today. Perfect. That was, that was all the questions I had. Yeah, Anything there's, I think there's one last one. Do we integrate oh, with Salesforce? I, one. I would need to probably understand a little bit more I need a little more information on that one, but if you want to, if you want to give me a call or um, so we use Salesforce. Now I'm not sure exactly <laughs> how we would, um, how you're expecting us to integrate with Salesforce, but I'd be happy to talk about it. So if you wanted to, you know, get in touch with me directly, uh, my contact information is on the screen, and I'd be happy to answer that question direct. Awesome. Well, we have no more questions right now. Um, just I wanted to thank you for that very informative presentation again. And please remember, if you have any further questions for Andrea her, or Angela, I'm sorry, her contact information will be provided as well as the recording of the webinar as she just mentioned. And these will be on the on-demand section of the PAMIC website. So also as a little heads up, you should have, uh, or you will be receiving a save the date email for our claims summit this week. So just keep a lookout for that. And just another thank you again to, Invo to Invoice Cloud for hosting this presentation. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you.